evening everybody um of course this evening was uh, not necessarily a good evening for the philadelphia flyers whatsoever as they get spanked smoked torched whatever adjective you want to use six to one by the sabers who were on an 18 game if they lost this game going on a record losing streak um this was a very embarrassing performance for the flyers of uh, brian elliott was hung out to dry just like most goaltenders for the Flyers this year again by the defense, especially in the month of March. Thankfully, that month's over, but the Flyers have one of the hardest schedules in hockey in the month of April, so it ain't getting any easier. You had teams you could have took advantage of this month, and the Flyers did not. So um, they continue to not do that tonight. They left Sam Reinhardt open in the slot. Uh, Elliot couldn't do anything about that. Went off of Braun. Lazar <clears throat> was... um. Justin Braun not make a good play there was able was uh, then ended up shooting it off of the Sabres player and then Lazar on a good pass by Riley Sheehan is able to put it in um, when he was wide open in the slot there was no back check on that play that's inexcusable you have to have better back check <coughs> the only good play by the Flyers offensively was Provorov's goal which was kind of getting the Sabres back for the deflection off of Braun that ended up deflecting off of one of the defenders for the Sabres in front of the net and going in assisted by Couturier and Voracek, um, who really struggled tonight. And it needs to look better on the back check and kind of look better overall on the forecheck, which this team really looked piss poor overall doing today. Uh, were not active with their sticks and not good on the forecheck. Uh, they should look at the tape, honestly, of their uh, minor league team, the Phantoms, of tonight's game, who were very active on their sticks and very good on the forecheck. Um, because they won 4-1 to one against Hershey. You got spanked 6-1 to one against the Buffalo Sabres of all teams. Um, Fogarty was able to score his first NHL goal, and I believe what's his uh, about 24th, 25th game played. Something about like Jamie Bascal, the great Jamie Bascal Flyers, and the gritty set. Uh, definitely check them out. There's a bunch of great stuff I write for them. Uh, Lance Green, a bunch of great others. Frankie, Sam, a bunch of great other people write for them. So definitely check them out. But Fogarty this, uh, got his first goal. And there's something about guys just getting their first goals or scoring their first goals in like 200 and some games or days against us. I mean, it's ridiculous. But congratulations to him on doing that. <clears throat> and that was Eric Gustafson just not picking up his guy. The national broadcast said he was checking air, which he was. Uh, he just didn't pick up his guy there. That was terrible play by him. Uh, they explained why Ghost um, wasn't in this evening, so you could get the better cap relief if you leave him out again. But he needs to be back in Saturday. Gus looked very bad in this game. He was a big part of what happened with the Fogarty goal. And then um, later on, <clears throat> on the Montour goal, when Alex Lyon was in, he made a nice kick-out save, and then Gus just turned around and didn't pick up his man. He just went towards the net again when the... Clearly, the guy in front of the net was going to be the other defender's responsibility, and you have to get the guy that's crashing the net for his rebound, and he didn't do that. So I think that's on Gus after Lyon makes a nice kick-out save. The middle stat one was a nice pass by Fogarty uh, to get his second point of the night um, as they just left him wide open in front of the net. So the defense, again, uh, for all of these goals, um, just collapsed and did not protect their goaltenders. One iota, and then, of course, the one Montour goal before he scored again on a rebound was an empty netter, so um, nothing, uh, the defense and anything. That was just a desperation pool at that point, hoping down 4-1 to one, some miracle would happen. But this was a terrible performance by the Flyers. They have no excuse for this performance against the Buffalo Sabres after trying to hold the team accountable, Claude Giroux and others did in their post-game comments. After last game, after having to come back, they came out even flatter in this game and even worse in this game and even played worse in front of their netminder. Um, I think the only silver lining in this game really was, I thought, um, Lyon replacing Moose actually looked really good. Uh, the, yeah, you could say maybe he should control everyone better, but no, he really couldn't have because those kick-out saves, when you make that save, that's what they try to tell you to do. I, I remember listening <clears throat> to a couple of uh, podcasts, hockey podcasts I listened to um, for the hockey news and other things that say when you um, are a goaltender, you're taught to try to kick that out towards the sideboards. That's where that would have went um, if the – Montour wasn't able to crash the net, and Gus actually played good defense and boxed his man out from crashing the net instead of just turning his body uh, to the player. So I thought he played really well. That's the only silver lining from tonight. I thought Braun 
uh, had his worst game of the season. He's actually looked pretty good this year. Um, I have to eat crow on him uh, not thinking uh, he was the best signee to bring back um, just because of his age and looking like he's slowing down. He definitely doesn't move fleet of foot on his skates, but has looked pretty solid this year. But tonight, uh, he definitely was piss poor and was a big part of two goals. And then Gus was a big part of the other two goals. And Gus uh, is a guy that I don't think needs to be in the lineup. I, I don't like saying this, but he just has been pretty off this year where Ghost at least uh, brings us something um, of more consistency and not as much blatancy of just disregard and having those plays where he just completely leaves his man and is checking air and is turning his back on guys consistently like we see from Gus. Uh, so I think uh, you'll see Ghost come back in most likely from the taxi squad on Saturday and that is how it should be, uh, it's going to be tough. The Flyers have a very tough schedule. They're not setting themselves up for a good spot. Right now, I would definitely have to say I don't think this team is going to make the postseason, that's for sure. But uh, they're trying to set themselves up, it seems, with the cap move uh, with Ghost and also signing uh, Cam York to potentially have some sparks coming up. They could call up Lazinski, who's performing really well in the minor. You can't call up Willman uh, until next year, for those that do not know. Or they could call up others that are performing well in the minors as well if they want to shake up the offense if defenseman-wise with a guy like Derek Pouillard, who's a veteran in the AHL that's been in the NHL for quite some games as well um, when needed for the Penguins in the past. So uh, there's some options there, but <clears throat> really the only way they're going to recover is if they really just snap into it and start playing like they did, not really even at the beginning of the season because they were playing through flaws, but really how they were playing last season when they were on their run. And that's going to be tough to do because in order to do that, you're going to have to have York step in and really provide a spark. Sandheim and Meyer start to look like we know they can look. And also, probably, not probably, definitely add in a defenseman and have to have Samuel Moore and continue to improve and perform like I think he will. Um, and then have Carter Hart come back from this week off like uh, a lot of us, I believe, think he will. And I know a lot of the players from listening to their quotes and the quotes that are tweeted out um, from all of the analysts, uh, including Jamie Pascal, Bill Metzler, and a bunch of the other great analysts, that they're back in Carter Hart. They believe that he'll be back and he'll be back stronger, and I do as well. So we need to see him respond. I think Lyon's a guy they can go to. There's reports the Flyers are looking at some goalies on the market. As a closing point, I don't think they need to do that. I think Lyon proved tonight coming in. He can be an NHL-capable goalie. Played three out of four nights last week for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms and won on Friday and Saturday evening against the Binghampton Devils and looked very good in both games. Won a lot of PKs as well. Uh, he's beating the Bruins, the Avalanche. He has five NHL wins. So I think he's shown uh, that he can be a, a good uh, backup and is just getting better as time goes on and is a guy that is going to progress, I think, into an NHL backup just as one of those late-ager guys that breaks into the league at 27, 28 and then shows what he can do as a backup. So I feel like his time to shine can be now, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're not going to go with Hart yet since a full week is not technically Saturday. Um... If they decide to go with Lyon in that one after the team just again did not play well in front of Elliott. And they looked um, all right. Um, not Well, they didn't really look that good in front of Lyon either, but he looked really good is, I guess, the way to put it in this game. And he made his kick-out save that Gus just failed him on trying to box out the guy on the rebound. And then Montour was able to score on the rebound. But I think he's a guy you can go to if needed. I, wonder, I don't know who they're going to go to. They have a choice from three guys on Saturday. We'll have to see. But this team really needs to get it going, and they need to do some trades. They won't have any shot of making it. But as of now, I definitely would say from this month of March, um, they are definitely not going to make the postseason, but stranger things can happen. You can have a great month of April, but they're going to have to go through a slew of the Capitals, the Bruins a couple times, uh, the Penguins, and the Rangers um, in this month. So it ain't going to be easy, and the Islanders as well. So that has been a reaction to this embarrassing 6-1 to one loss to the Buffalo Sabres. Um, obviously, Fogarty, for them, is the player of the game, <clears throat> unfortunately, as well as Brandon Montour, who also played a very good game, and Olmark, who played a good game as well. The Flyers had 32 shots on that. A lot of those went the most pivotal chances, but they had some good ones in the second period. It was the only time they showed any push. But this was absolutely an atrocious loss. You cannot do this against the Buffalo Sabres. The Flyers have to come out with some pounce against the Islanders, and then they're playing Boston, so it ain't getting easy for them. Um, but hopefully maybe playing these uh, superior teams, that'll bring out the best in you and not have you kind of come out flat and kind of, I think, doubting these inferior teams. So we'll be able to see 
what the Flyers are able to do against a good Islanders team. Uh, whoever's in net, I believe in and have full confidence in. All three of the goalies we have right now in Lyon and Hort and Elliott, the defense is hanging all these guys out to dry, and they got to get their heads out of the rear end and really get going fast, and we probably need some defensive acquisitions, and the defense from the forwards needs to get going like the snap of a finger quick as well if this team wants to have any chance. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Try and hit 130 by the end of the first week of April. Everyone stay safe and well out there. Enjoy all the great hockey. This has been Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric, a.k.a. Pro Joe. Peace out, everybody.